Hello there, Tanya Gustafson here, your nutritionist and fitness coach. Welcome to another episode of Fit Nutrition Podcast. Thanks for joining me here today. Please let me know down in the chat where you're watching from. If you got to watch live, thank you so much for joining. Um, if you're watching on the replay, thank you also for taking the time. And uh, so today, uh, you might have noticed from the title, a little bit of a more serious topic today, dying to be thin. And so I have touched on the uh, medications and things that we're going to talk about today, namely Ozempic, Wagovi, and all of those um, that are related to that. There's been a lot of kerfuffle coming up in the news lately here in Canada, the UK, the US, about um, suicidal ideation and self-harm thoughts and things that are coming from these products. And now, just to think, um, Ozempic, is uh, is an injectable. Wagovi is not. And um, Wagovi is actually also recommended for children. So when I when I knew that, and then I heard that now they were investigating and Health Canada here is actually investigating, I believe over in the UK, they're also investigating. I'm not sure about the US, but they are investigating all of these claims that um, and what people are reporting. And th that they are sometimes experiencing thoughts of wanting to self harm or or thoughts of suicide, which can which is very serious because we're thinking also here people are very, um, I mean weight loss is a very emotional thing to begin with, right? And if you're at that point, for the people who are at that point who have believed that they've tried everything out there and that nothing works for them. Right. And so now they're resorting to to drugs and to things that are more extreme to try to just to try and feel better and to get that weight off. And it, it's very it's, it's a very emotional thing. It's a very um, it's a very stressful thing. And then to have a side effect where it also plays on your mind that you have to have this stressful struggle and this emotional struggle and and perhaps you know these thoughts i just you know, i just had to come on here and address this because i really wanted to drive this home for people because i mean it's been so widespread in such a short period of time okay originally if you're not familiar with it you're probably living under a rock at this point <laughs> sorry no offense but it's just been all over the news and all over everywhere but okay so these drugs ozempic wagovi um several others they're you know all similar semiglutides is what they are and they were designed for people with diabetes to help them regulate their blood sugar. We here know that when you regulate your blood sugar, then your, your body, you know, turns the metabolism back on it naturally releases some stored fat. It's also an appetite suppressant, which is a little bit contraindicated to what we do here, right? We do focus on stabilizing your blood sugar, eating our proteins, our fats, and our carbs together, you know, in the right portions and the right frequencies throughout the day, every three hours, we want to do that. And that keeps us stable and balanced and it keeps our body humming along with the metabolism. Our body naturally releases stored fat, protects our muscle because if you are uh, allowing your blood sugar to drop, your body burns muscle, it also deteriorates your bone mass. And then your body wants to store fat because it's been deprived for so long. It's thinking, I'm not sure when I'm going to get food again or how much I'm going to get. So when we eat, we and we generally eat too much if we've taken too long in between, then everything extra that our you know that we've eaten above of what our body can normally metabolize, our we our blood sugar spikes up and our, and our body stores fat. So we're really working against ourselves when we do that, right? So we want to make sure we're eating frequently. So these drugs are designed to stabilize blood sugar, but they're also an appetite suppressant, which has made them popular for weight loss. The diet industry is still telling people, if you're overweight, you're eating too much, as opposed to what are you eating? And let's see if we can put that in balance, because it's generally not too much calorically. It's usually too many nutrient deficient foods, right? There's a, there's a, um, we live in a society where we have an abundance of foods and food-like substances, but we are malnourished as a society because, like I said, a lot of those foods are food-like substances. They are not foods with substance, all right? And I know that you know where I, you know, I know that you understand that and you can relate with that because just go to the grocery store, just take a look at what some people have in their carts 
and take a look at how healthy they look. You know, forget about what their body is, what their weight looks like. Just look at them from here up. Take a look next time when you're out in the grocery store and and, and you can take a look and see what people um, are choosing to put in their bodies, mostly because I think they don't know that a lot of that stuff is causing things. And so here's a here's a thought. And I've run into this with people before. You know, they have uh, everybody has this. I shouldn't say everybody. A lot of people have this belief that if it's on the shelf to purchase, regardless of what it is, then it must have been, you know, rubber stamped by some sort of health regulatory agency. It's been rigorously tested and it's safe for us to consume. <laughs> that's that's a misnomer. It's a it's a it's a lot of we wish that were so, right? And for some um, categories of products, it's very rigorous. And for others, it's not. And so we cannot assume that just because it's there on the shelf available for us, that we, you know, we can be eating it without any consequence, without any problems. And so that's where the label reading comes in. And we've talked about this before and, and knowing that, uh, you know, to choose things that have whole food ingredients more often and not the package and all of that. And, and everybody, you know, I think knows that, but still there's that, well, if it's on the shelf, it can't have anything bad in it. Sometimes it just doesn't have anything nourishing in it. You know, so if you're doing that over time, over time, over time, your body becomes nutrient deficient. You become tired and stressed and um, you gain weight because your body's not properly functioning. It's not nourished. It's, it's inflamed and an inflamed body. Inflammation is the root cause of all disease, but an inflamed body will also hold on to weight because an inflamed body is also not a healthy body and an unhealthy body holds on to weight. So it, it's all, it all plays together in this. So back to the drugs, those drugs were designed for people that had diabetes and um, it was designed to help them stabilize their blood sugar. And, but all of these, many of these doctors are also being paid to promote this. And so that's a whole other, that's a whole other podcast, but I was reading on that as well too. And, but recently now they're discovering, you know, it's been really, you know, um, popular for weight loss. And so because doctors are being paid to promote it, it's very easily gotten for people to, to just take home, do it themselves for weight loss. They don't have diabetes or, or, or anything like that. Some do, but you know, the other ones that are just wanting it for weight loss, they're wanting a quick fix. They're wanting something or they're so desperate. They just need to have something to get a result. Okay. And, and there's, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of mindset that needs to happen with this too. And, and that's my real issue with this is that we know that blood sugar stabilization works for every body. We have to understand also that some people have a, have a, they've been dieting so long. They just have this diet mentality that they just believe that, you know, they've been doing so many things for so long and it's just not working or it worked worked for a short period of time and now it doesn't work anymore and they're of that mind that well it only worked because I was 20 or only worked because I was 30 and now I'm 50 or I'm in my 60s and it's not working it's not working anymore so I need I need medical intervention whereas if we can come back to what does our body need to function how are we designed to function and put our bodies back in that place we can achieve that we're not going to achieve it overnight and just let me tell you, as far as those drugs go, I have listened to Dr. Anna Toker, Anna Toker, very lovely, very knowledgeable gastrointestinal surgeon who does prescribe Ozempic with the caveat that she puts her people on a food plan to balance their PFCs, eating proteins, fats, and carbs every three hours. Only, and she only prescribes it because other doctors are so readily prescribing it without the food plan. So she is dovetailing people into a food plan. And because the drugs, the Ozempic, the Wagovi, whatever it is that, that you're looking at, she, uh, you know, in her experience, it takes about three months for any results to happen. So if she can get that person to buy in and the condition of having that is that they need to stabilize their blood sugar with food in between, you know, as they're doing this, they generally don't need to come back and get more medication because they've now already started the process naturally with whole food. So they maybe get their, their one, maybe their two injections and, and then they don't need it anymore. So 
Uh, I thought that was really interesting, right? So she's using it in a way that she can help people as a tool and then to just to come back to to regular uh, healthy things. But but back to the, the the suicidal ideation, it was very concerning to me because some of these drugs are approved for children. And and we know that that suicide among you know young teen young adults and, and teens is very high on the on the um on the uh the list of things that cause death among our youth. And so we want we don't need anything else to add to that. So one of the things that as I was looking this up, um so I'm just gonna uh I'm sorry, I'm just searching for the one that I was uh looking at. So um articles by pretty much any news agency out there. So this is one uh, from Canada here from the CBC News that Health Canada is assessing the popular diabetes weight loss drugs like Ozempic for suicide risk. And when I when I was as I was reading through, um, it says that it's the complaints are sparking drug reviews in other countries. So in, in Canada, on our Health Canada website, there were 688 as adverse reaction reports concerning um, the Ozempic, which is produced by Novo Nordisk, and the CBC News counted three related to suicide and depression between 2018 and the end of March 2023. So you're thinking, well, that's not very many in, in a short period of time. The point is we can do other things to, to not do that, right? To, to have people not uh, be subjected to that. And the, the risk is, is quite high. And we don't know, maybe maybe other people have, have experienced that and they just went off the drugs themselves. We don't know. The vast majority of, of uh, adverse reactions were nausea, vomiting, stomach pain. So, so think about this. People are so um, desperate to lose the weight that they haven't been able to get off before, or they believe that they weren't, you know, that they've tried everything, that they are going to, you know, and these these um, risks are well documented. They're, you know, on the on all the literature, that they are going to put themselves through nausea, vomiting, stomach pain. Uh, there's many others, diarrhea, uh, constipation, all of these kinds of things, gastrointestinal things, just to to lose weight, and. And now even that the risks are still are, are out there, that there is a risk of suicide, there is the risk of, of feeling like you need to, that you might want to self-harm and everything. That's why I titled this dying to be thin, because people are, some people are just so desperate that they will risk that just to get the weight off. So why do people do that? Why, why is that's the question, right? And, and I think it's, um it's a lot of desperation. There's also what we've talked about before the amygdala attack. So I'm just gonna bring up this uh, this little graphic here for you. So here is our brain with all the different parts, all the color codings. We're only gonna talk about these two here. So the hippocampus is this like this guy with the library of stuff. He is, uh, this is where all your knowledge is stuff is knowledge is sort of like your filing cabinet like the library whatever you want to call it of information all the things you know you should be doing right and sometimes that little voice on our shoulder tells us that we should be you know or gives us that you know oh you can do this you don't have to do that anymore just do this do this and that's where the amygdala attack comes in so it's like those little missiles right it's a very small spot in the brain but it's very powerful. Just like, you know, our tongue is one of the smallest, you know, muscles kind of around in this area of our body, but it's very powerful, right? We can use it for good or we can use it for not so good. It's the same kind of thing. So here the amygdala is kind of like that little guy on the shoulder that says, yeah, you don't have to do that or it's not working for you. Remember, you tried that before. It didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't work. Uh, it's never going to work for you. Um, you know, you're just going to always have that weight on you. You're never going to get rid of it. Yep. So you should probably do this. Just try that because that's your only hope. And it's that little voice that if you let it start, it keeps going. And it's just even though you know in the back of your mind that and I believe most people do, that if they're trying something that can be, I'm just going to come out of here so I can talk to you again. If they're trying something that they think it, that it might be a quick fix or um, gimmicky or something like that, I've heard this before from clients, from 
um, people that I've had um, assessment calls with and then have become clients where they say, well, yeah, I tried that. And, I, and it's, I just did it just to, just to get started, just to, um, to get some results. And then I, you know, I knew I couldn't do it forever. So then I was going to do something else. I'm like, well, what were you going to do? Well, I don't really know. Cause they, they don't have an, they don't have something else to go to if no one's taught them properly. So then that voice comes back again saying, well, this is the only thing you can do. This is the only thing you can do. And so when we know that we're being attacked that way, most people don't know. We call it kind of call it the angel and the devil on the shoulder. You know, it's coming back and it's talking to you. And, and there's that voice in your head that's telling you to do those things. And you probably know that it's not going to work or you, you kind of think it might not be so such a great idea, but we do it anyway. You know, you maybe you make a bad food choice and you're like, oh, what did I do that for? I didn't even want it. Yeah, amygdala attack. And then it happens to everybody. Life happens, usually happens in a stressful situation. Usually happens when we're not feeling our best. Usually happens when maybe we're feeling sad or stressed or mad or or things aren't going the way we want or expect or need them to go in our day or in our week or in our month. You know, it could be cumulative. And that's what's happening with people who are um, who have been experiencing or been un unable to lose weight, unable to get the health results that they need for these long extended periods of time. And they're just so desperate that they're, they're allowing that um, amygdala to attack over what they would otherwise know as something that probably isn't the best idea for them to try. And they should look at, at a healthier option. The problem is the medical system is not teaching people how to stabilize their blood sugar for the general population. They are talking to diabetics about you should do this where even then it's reactive. You know, have you ever, um, and I used to work in a school, we had some diabetic children and they were told to, you know, check your blood sugar at that time. It was a little pinprick on your finger, check your blood pressure or sorry, blood sugar uh, every so often. So recess and lunch and before they went home after school, things like that. But it wasn't like, okay, you need to eat your proteins, fats and carbs together and balance your blood sugar. And then just make sure you're on track. It was no, 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 check it. And uh, if you're high, take some more insulin. If you're low, have some juice or have some candy. We're not nourishing our body, right? We're reactively doing something to get a result. And, and we don't get that nice, even keel. We get one of these and one of those and one of these and one of those. And it's very disruptive to the body. So, um, so <laughs> all that to say, we know here that blood sugar blood sugar stabilization works for every body. And if you know somebody who is considering Ozempic or Wagovi or any of those other semi-glutide um, type medications for weight loss, diabetes, any of that, please would you share you know this information with them? Please would you look it up? Uh, and maybe send them an article, send them a news article about the dangers, about the side effects. I mean, I can, I'll drop some in the comments here of the things where I was looking so that you can easily grab those links and share. I know that we can't share a video out of this group, uh, but you can absolutely uh, send people to my website at fuelignitethrive.com and let them book a, a free call with me. And, you know, if they have questions about that, we can discuss that. But I will put some links down below to where I where I discovered um, where the uh, news articles are, the studies and all of that kind of stuff. So people can take a look and read that for themselves. Because we really need to get that out there. People really need to know that there is a better way. There is a way that you can do this with food naturally. Is it going to happen overnight? No. But did you get where you are overnight? No. So we shouldn't expect a miracle to happen overnight, consistently over time, that 1% that we talk about doing 1% better today than we did yesterday. Am I saying that people should never take medications? Absolutely not. There is a definitely a place for medications in our world. There's, uh, but I believe firmly, and, I've, and I know this to be true because I've seen this in many instances in my own life, with my family, with friends, with clients, lots of different places that if you, um, if every medication were to come with a prescription of health, whether that's 
mindset, um, you know, organizing your morning routine so that you can start the day stress free and then and hydrating with water first thing in the morning instead of coffee and then balancing your proteins, fats and carbs throughout the day and learning how to do that and learning the quality of foods and where they come from and why we put things together and and the importance of moving your body, the importance of strength training as we get older, all of the, the importance of uh, managing your stress and getting enough sleep and, and filling in your nutritional gaps, all of those things. If that prescription came with a little checklist that it, that it, that addressed all of those things, we would see a massive reduction in the need for prescription drugs. We would see a massive uh, relief on our healthcare system because people would be cycling back and reversing some of those lifestyle diseases that have come upon them. All the metabolic diseases, they're called lifestyle diseases for a reason, by the way, anybody ever thought about that? their lifestyle because like, you know, because of our lifestyle, what, what we have done or not done consistently over time leads to a result good or not so good. So health is something that you can enjoy uh, in, in your life and live long and prosper and, and enjoy, or you can suffer with it and suffer through it. And that's not what, what I want for anybody. And so hopefully this information has has helped somebody here that you can send it on to somebody or maybe somebody in the group is considered, you know, you're following along and you haven't actually dove in to your program yet. And maybe you had been considering trying one of those, those because they're all over, you know, trying those new drugs because they're all over and they're marketed very well. And so I would just invite you to pause on that and really dive into what you can do with your health, with food, with a proper nutrition, with uh, movement and water and reducing the stress and balancing your hormones and filling your gaps and all of those things. And, uh, and do reach out in the group. If you have questions, please put your questions in the group. Please drop them down here. I'm happy to answer them. That's what this group is for. We have so many amazing other health professionals in our group here too, that uh, everyone can, you know, tag team with everybody else and, and offer information and solutions, things that you can do to help improve your health today. And then, you know, keep improving it as we get older, because there is a small demographic of people getting healthier as they age. It's not an exclusive club. Everyone in this club here in our Fit Lifers group, in our eight weeks is all it takes group, we are part of that working together to, you know, to, to be together, to be that group of healthier people as we age. And uh, I, I'd like to think that that small demographic is going to get bigger over time. And as long as we keep sharing what we find out and helping people make better decisions over the longer term, then, you know, we will achieve that. So thanks for watching today. Love to hear your comments below and then tune in again next week for another episode of Fit Nutrition Podcast. Have a great day.